Hello everyone, Minnie here with a gentle guide for our new role players just entering Conan for this season. If you check the channel description, you'll also find a link to the written guide that should assist with any questions or concerns. Now, let's start with making your character this season. Obviously when you first load up Conan, it's going to have you create your character and then you will find yourself in one of these small structures with seemingly no way out. This is the spawn zone, or at least one of them. There are a few, and hopefully you'll end up in one of several of them. So, when you first start off in a spawn zone, you're going to find two things of note or of interest. So first is the summoning circle. This is what you came in on, according to the lore. And then you're also going to find a box. So this is your starting kit box. These will be available in all of them. Once you open this box, you'll be able to have access to the gear and items within. Feel free to take as much as you need because as soon as you close it and open it up, it's going to refill. The next thing you're going to see is the envoy. But before we talk to the envoy, I'm going to point out a couple of things, useful tips that are available. So the first useful tip is when you check your map, you're going to notice a couple of different outposts available. It's going to show you dwarf, Duskhaven, Orc, Goblin, Elven, and Halfling. These are all the starting towns, so if there's a particular place you want to start, you're welcome to choose, okay, well, I want to start at the Goblin Outpost because I want to be close here. Then you can go to the Goblin Outpost, and so on and so forth, depending on where you want to begin your adventure. Granted, keep in mind, if you want to choose your class immediately, you're going to want to start in Duskhaven. Duskhaven has a lot of benefits to it, so I personally recommend starting in Duskhaven, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. The next thing I want to cover is your quick keys. So the number one quick key you're more than likely going to be using is your emotes. So if you hold down shift and press H, this will open your emotes wheel. These are my personal favorites, so I keep these up near the top. But as you need them, you can go ahead and use them from here. You'll also find that you there are new oh well, let's stop the emote really quick from uh, continuing the audio but there are new facial emotes so if you want your character to smile if you want your character to grimace um or if you want your character to kind of look around these are all options you can do just play around with it see what you like and there you go the next one that we're going to go over is the kits. Now the m most kits you'll have access to are going to be your racial kits and things like that but in the very beginning you're gonna have access to the starter kit which is the same thing that's in that box the SP gem which these are unequipped gems that you may need in order to unequip certain things such as horns shoulder pads tails so on and so forth your starter house which has a seven day cooldown but you'll have access to a foundation a building a bed a chair a chest a table and a bird cage which we'll go over a bit later you'll have access to the emotes which are all of the vanilla emotes, and you'll have access to a note. So once you have something that you want, let's just say the, the we'll stick with the starter kit, you would just hit purchase, and all of these items would end up in your inventory. Now granted, I don't need all these items, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop them all, except for the iron pick, the iron sickle, the torch, the rough wraps, the iron hatchet, the pigeon, and the mailbox. You're also gonna learn that the next quick key that you have access to is Shift X. This will open up your raw character customization so you can actually ed edit and customize your character from here if there were any details that you weren't sure, like maybe a body paint or something along those lines. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is Shift M, which brings up your improved quality of lights this or improved quality of life this is going to actually update your physics your settings so if you want to have a mini map you can do that um, your appearance so if you have an appearance that you already had you can go ahead and load one of those or you can edit your current appearance using your mouse you can navigate around here and ed edit your character once you're done apply and leave and then you can also uh, that's that's just another quick way to edit your character once you're satisfied with the controls and you're happy and comfortable with how you want to, to move on, simply talk to the envoy that's in the location 
and they're gonna have ask you a couple of questions you can ask them where they you are how did you get here who this guy is but the, if you want to get out of here you're gonna want to ask how do I get out of here so what he's gonna do is he's gonna ask you well, what is your race essentially are you human are you elf are you dwarf are you a halfling are you tiefling are you goblin are you orc you select one of these now me myself and I I want to be a tiefling so I'm just gonna go ahead and select tiefling and then I'm gonna confirm my my selection He's going to make me a tiefling, give me my racial benefits, and then we're going to go ahead and choose a starter city. So I'm going to go right to the human village, and he's going to teleport me to the human village. Now, once you arrive in the village and you have your racial set, you now have access to your racial kit. So if you type in kit, forward slash kit, you're now going to find some new kits. Now with the tieflings, they get the elven and the tiefling because the elven just has ears. But if you go to the tiefling kit, uh, and purchase. This is where you'll have access to horns, uh, unequip attached horns. So I myself, personally, I think it's these horns I like. I can dye, oh no, not these ones. I think it's these horns. I like these ones. I'm gonna go ahead and dye them black because I like the black horns. Attach those, so I've got my horns. And then if I want, I can do the, the attached tail and then I like the glowing eyes, so I'll access the eyes. And then everything else I don't want, so I'm going to go ahead and just drop everything. Why Conan doesn't have a drop all feature, I don't know. Anyway, so now I've got my horns and I got my tail and I'm pretty much all set to go. So let's head on into Duskhaven. So Duskhaven is more than likely going to take a couple minutes for you to load because it is a very large place. But once you load it, it is going to be probably one of your number one places to stop. So I will go ahead and go through some of the main locations of here. So the first thing you're going to be greeted with is the information booth. Now this guy is going to kind of give you a bit of a tour of how to navigate the place. And then you've got the town crier Bowen. Now Bowen, keep an eye on the color of his shirt. So let's say right now he's got a white shirt. Every time his shirt color changes, that means there's new news that you haven't at least if his shirt is a color that you didn't know about, um, then he'll have new news for everyone. The news is going to be dependent on role play. So if you do something big and it affects multiple people, Bowen may have something to say about it. He may share your exploits and your deeds to the city. So just keep an eye out. Right now, he's got his own news, which I'm not gonna share right now. You can discover that in character. But uh, yeah, that's Bowen and the news. Of course, if you want to have your own news thing, then yeah, go for it, definitely. To the right here, you're going to find, this is basically the uh, Settler's District. So you have Alibus, he's the Caravan Master. He can actually give you get you to some of the other places. Uh, he can take you to the Elven City, the Dwarvish, the Halfling, the Goblins, and the Orcs Outpost. But we're not going to be leaving just yet, and I do highly recommend take some time, go to those locations, explore, because there are so many little tiny... Uh, places that we hid in there, including this town. So the first place you're going to note is the tavern. This is Tina's tavern, and she has the availability to sell you food and drink, water, things like that. A lot of these NPCs will be for quests and all those things. Then you've got the inn. So let's say you're in town and you have to log out really fast, but you don't want to log out in the open, you can actually rent an inn room. So talk to Belfaza. It's going to cost you 15 silver to get a key, but once you have the key, you'll have access to a room that people cannot have access to unless they have a key. So then you can log out in one of these rooms and then you're relatively safe. Just keep in mind, other people can rent the room at the same time. If you do rent a room and there is someone in the room, do not steal their key. If your character is a thief and wants to steal from them, fine, whatever, leave a note. Please leave a note, but do not steal a key. If you absolutely have to steal something, uh, type, in a, uh, type in the note key, purchase a note, leave them a note with a clue for valid RP. Don't just steal their crap. We want roleplay here. Roleplay people. Okay, once you're done with the room, talk to Belfaza, say, here you go, and you'll get 10 silver back and lose the key. So we've got a couple different areas to explore. So to the left, you're going to find the Farmer's Guild, the Wizard's Tower, 
and the Hunter's Guild. Now these are all important locations. Now the farmer's location here is, so if you're human and you start off human, you can talk to Carl here and he will actually sell you a camel. If you are not human, he will not sell you a camel. Instead, he'll tell you jokes. Um, you can also talk to Reyna here and she does have some mounts and things available to buy. So you can buy recipes, you can buy animals. Of course, there's horses. These are the basic four horses as well as a donkey. Um, and some basic saddles, but she'll sell those things to you. The next stop is the actual farm itself. You're actually going to find uh, Nancy over here. She'll actually sell you some vegetables and fruits as well as some of the recipes as well. Very useful for builders, people that like to decorate and all that stuff. Up here in the apothecary is Hermel. She'll sell you some medicines, aloe extracts, concentration and things like that and you'll oh I need to change the prices ignore those prices right now they are subject to change uh, up in the tower I'm not gonna go in there but that is Gilroy's tower and he is part of the lore he is actually the wizard that teleports you to the starting zone down here in the Hunter's Guild. So the Hunter's Guild, we want people to utilize as like a meeting point between players. So here you can actually buy uh, supplies and stationery. Now supplies Welcome. include hunting supplies, skinning knives, cleavers, as well as uh, scrolls. The stationery is where you can buy birds, ravens, books, mailboxes, bird coops, uh, and so on and so forth. And then over here is the most important spot. So this is the bulletin board. There are several things you can do here. So if you are looking to make a change in the hub, you want to add something to the store, all you have to do is go over to the Hunter's Guild mailbox. Now, even though it says locked, you can still put things in there. So you just select it. It's gonna pull up this inventory. Your note or letter, whatever, to the guild must be in character. Write it, drop it in, and deposit it. And then when an admin has time, which I, I usually be the one to check those, I'll check the mailbox and then we'll, we'll get whatever done that we need done. The next thing is clan requests. Are you looking for a clan or are you looking for members for your clan? You can put your requests in this box and leave them there. If your clan if, if you're no longer looking for people or you're no longer looking for a clan, please stop by here again and remove your request. This way only active requests are put in here. Next is the job request. Now let's say you're doing a quest uh, and there's a boss and you just can't beat it and you need help. All you have to do is put in your request here, say what you're looking for, say how to contact them, and leave it in here. Once your job is complete, please remove your job requests so that people do not try to reach out to you when the job is already complete. This should hopefully help people get together a little bit more. Now, if you are looking to send someone something and you have a bird in here so again everyone starts off with a pigeon i highly recommend using your own coop but if you don't care about whether or not you lose your bird you can put your bird in here and you can nest it your bird will end up in here take your letter or whatever you want and put it in the item box and then you can take your bird and put it down here and then you select your destination that you want it to travel to and then as soon as you do just hit send and it will your bird as well as the parcel will fly off to deliver the message after about 15 minutes or so your bird is going to return to the coop here and it will be nested until you pick it out or someone else does so just again uh, if you want to remove your bird just put it in here and then pull it out i'm gonna have a raven in here for someone's use if they need it but if not just please leave the birds in here so that we have access to it. As a matter of fact, let me actually put a couple of ravens in here for people. Actually, I'll do that a bit later. So, again, after 15 minutes transpires, your pigeon is going to end up leaving a parcel here. Now, granted, you can always just drop it in here, but that's just an example. If you want to send people um, some coops, you're welcome to do that. Uh, quick recap, just to cover over there, we have the Lore Wizard's Tower, the Apothecary, where you can buy medications and things. We've got the Farmer's Guild, where you can buy horses and mounts. And we've got the Hunter's Guild, where people can get in contact with one another for clans and job requests and sending letters publicly. 
to the right here, you're going to find a ship. This is the Crucible's ship. Now, the Crucible is a new group of people that we've uh, made up. They are a group of monster hunters, in a way. So, if you go and talk to all of them, you will find there is a lot of lore there. I'm not going to actually go there. I'm going to have you leave that for, your, you know, yourself to discover. And then over here, we've got fishing. So, if you need to buy any fish and things like that, he'll sell you some things. But you can't go in there. Oh, <clears throat> so what just happened? Oh no, what is that noise? Lost reports. Okay, what that means is an event has just happened or began on the map. Lost reports, which I think is right here. So this is a brand new event that just popped up on the map. So if people go there and complete these events that pop up, that means they will get a hero's token. Collect those heroes tokens and do not lose them. They are useful and I will go over why in a minute here. So when you come up here, this is the merchants district. So over here, you'll have access to a, an armor's bench, which will be unlocked, but you'll also have access to an armory stand as well as a blacksmith stand over here. He'll sell weapons. Then we've got the Taylor Goblin over here. Hi. So she'll sell you some accessories Farewell. here. Then you've got the Taylor shop in here. He'll sell you clothes. And you've got up this way. This is the Halloween shop or the costume shop, which will change. Um, in the costume shop, you sounds just exactly what it sounds. Uh, you can buy masks, tails, ears, wings, nails, uh, pipe, uh, decorations, Halloween decorations, so on and so forth. Which we'll be adding some Christmas and stuff decorations in there too along the holidays. All right, so you remember that event just popped up? You're gonna wanna bring those hero's tokens to Clarita here. So Clarita can actually trade those tokens that you get for shoulder pets, a chibi cat pet, a different mount. You can also, if, if you're not sure how to remove the shoulder pet, she'll kind of explain, you know, there's, there's a red gem table, which is this right here. Just talk to it, grab one, you got a gem, and then you can remove your pet, which I personally don't need it, so I'm just gonna drop it. They don't cost anything, don't worry, but up here, up next, we have the housing district. So she may not seem like she has a lot, but these books are where it's at. So these books will teach you particular decorations for from shiny stuff mod. And we'll make it a little easier for you if you want to actually do your own decorations. I highly recommend buying the book, maybe becoming a housing merchant and selling people some of those decorations so not everyone has to. Then you've got Sayo here. Sayo here will sell uh, some of the general goods. Torches, which... Uh, bed rolls for pretty cheap, just a single silver, a tent if you want it, um, some of the shiny stuff, some schematics, a backpack which gives you a little bit of um, extra durability, and then like little torches and stuff. So like if you want just a, um, an unlit lantern, uh, we can buy that. And then, so now I've got a backpack and a lantern. Up here, you've got the culinary shop. So this guy will sell you some cooking recipes along with, the, with other foods and things. And right around the corner here is the carpenter. So Brielle, she'll sell you some wooden things. And probably the most important shop here is the coin exchange. So this is Stefan and he will exchange pippy currency for gold coins that you might find out in the map. So if you don't want to carry the currency around with you, you can exchange it for here for uh, actual pippy currency, or you can get the physical stuff if you want. There is a caravan that is actually pre-built into the map that actually takes bronze coins. So you can always change for, you need the physical bronze, co bronze coins in order to use that caravan. So right here in the cathedral is the priest. This priest guy is St. Ormond, so you may find yourself cursed in certain situations depending on where your roleplay takes you. If for any reason you want to remove your curse, talk to the priest and he can cleanse you of your curse. Okay, as for probably the most important location in this town is the actual guild hall. Now this guild hall is where you will have access to your classes. The ranger, the rogue, the soldier, and the mage. So the ranger, for example, you come in here, 
All you have to do is talk to Elmira and she'll actually give you your ability. Okay, well, I want to become a ranger. Or if you want to find out the benefits, they tell you some of the abilities that you get and things like that. Just read that, find out what works for you. Just be careful with what class you choose because as soon as you choose a class, it's going to cost you 50 gold if you want to change it. So you get rogue. These guys are good with daggers. Ranger, obviously good with bow and arrow. You've got soldier, which are good with melee weapons. And then, last but certainly not least, you have the mage, which is good with magic and spell or uh, shape shifting. So, if you want to become a mage, you'll get spells and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> if let's say you become a mage and you don't know how to use your spells, hold Shift and press B. You're going to have access to a spell book. This will pull up your spells that you have. Now, my character is, has gotten some spells because I've been testing things. But once you get these spells, you can just drag it right onto your hotbar. And then you can use them just like any other ability. If for any reason you don't want your spell anymore, just grab an item that can go into your hotbar, drag it over the spell, and it'll disappear. Also, keep in mind that in each of the classes, there's going to be a class shop available, usually on the first or second floor, and they'll sell class-specific abilities and items and things like that. Some decor, some actually useful. But I would say take some time to go around, talk to the NPCs, find out what you want to do before you actually select it. Not everything is going to be something that you really like. Um, and then go from there. Now, there are going to be a bunch of other extra bits and baubles in some of the other towns, such as the Halfling Village has its own inn. The Dwarvish has a couple of little cool things, like an, their own coin exchange and all that stuff. Um, the Elves have some interesting little things. You know, just take some time to explore it and find out what works for you. Once you find where you want to settle, that's where something else comes in. So as I said before, you're going to have access to several kits. Now, one of those kits being the starter house. Once you select the starter house, you'll get access to the foundation, all that stuff, purchase it, and then you can set up your house wherever you want. I highly recommend getting a little bit of distance from the hub or the hubs, the main cities. That way you're not built right on top of them. But they're very useful for getting started, but just keep in mind that that starter house does not come with a door, so you're going to have to build your own door. But at the very least, it'll get you out of the rain and get you started. The SP gems. So as I said before, occasionally you may end up with items that you don't want to wear. So let's say I have these horns. I don't want to wear them. Now granted, I can go into the accessories and I can just remove these. But if you have an item that's an attachable, and it's not showing up in your accessories tab, chances are that requires an actual unequipped gem in order to take off. So just pull out your unequipped gems. There may be beards, masks, uh, usually with the beards, it's the Dwarvish kit, um, tails, whatever. Just right click it. And just like you see, my tail got removed. But if I put my tail on, notice that my tail is nowhere to be found. So the only way I can remove my tail is through an unequipped gem. Once you're done, you can keep these, store them, toss them, whatever you want. They're kind of useless. And that's all they're good for is removing items. But yeah, I am super excited for the season to start. I can't wait to meet all of your characters. We've worked really hard on this. Definitely take some time to explore. There's a lot of free items that you can find just laying around. So take some time to check them all out. And uh, yeah, uh, if you have any ad other additional questions or concerns, be sure to just drop it down in the comment section or send me a DM on Discord uh, as long as it is pertaining to the actual season. I'll be more than happy to help. Um, but yeah, thank you again. And it, oh, one last thing. If you are not whitelisted for Twitch RP and want to participate in this Conan season, definitely apply. I will also include the application link in the description below. Go ahead and fill that out, and I will see you next time.